GM and Hertz announcing a deal today where GM will sell up to 175,000 electric vehicles to Hertz over the next five years. This comes after Hertz has made similar agreements with Tesla and others to help build out the rental company's EV fleet. GM CEO Mary Barra and Hertz CEO Stephen Schur join us now exclusively with, of course, our own Phil LeBeau. Phil, take it away. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, Mary, let's start first with you. You heard the outline of the deal that uh, you guys have made, 175,000 vehicles over the next five years. How much will this help General Motors reach its goal of selling 1 million EVs annually by 2025? Well, I think this is very important, and I, I really um, I have valued the partnership with Hertz. We've had it for a long time, and, and the look that they're doing and commitment to EVs, doing a long-term agreement, I think is going to help us achieve that goal because what we've learned is when a a customer experiences an EV, they're twice as likely to purchase. So this is going to be a wonderful opportunity to showcase General Motors EVs from Chevrolet all, the, all through all of our brands, even including Bright Drop. Well, let's talk about that customer experience. Stephen Schur, the CEO of Hertz, joining us. Uh, and Stephen, you're on the line, the phone line with us. What's your perspective in terms of you've got Teslas, you have Polestars right now, electric vehicles that people are renting. What are you finding in terms of when people are saying, I want an electric vehicle? Are they booking that in advance or is this more a case where they get to an airport or a location and they say, you know what, there's an EV. I think I want to drive that instead and, and I'll uh, upgrade to that. Hey, Phil. Uh, well, thanks for the question. Um, our customers are uh, making an affirmative statement up front uh, that they want to ride in an electric vehicle. And I think this deal really gives us the opportunity to expand the choice that they have uh, through and across General Motors product, as well as Polestar and Tesla. And we're seeing this, by the way, across all segments of our business. We're seeing it in the leisure traveler who wants to get into the car. We're seeing it in and among corporate travelers where companies are looking to fulfill their own, uh, you know, carbon footprint objective. And then importantly, we're seeing it in ride sharing where we are renting electric vehicles to Uber and Tesla. And so this is a very affirmative uh, demonstration of interest on the part of our customers. Mary, it's, it's Sarah Eisen in New York. You, I would think your stock would be up today on, on this deal. It's not. And, and perhaps that's because Ford is getting crushed today. Your competitor warning of a billion dollar hit because of part shortages and inflation and a warning on the on the third quarter. And I was wondering if you're experiencing the same kind of issues still just when we thought things were turning in the supply chain. Well, you know, as we announced previously, we did have some units that we built shy in, in Q2, and we said between Q3 and Q4 we would be completing those vehicles. We are on track to do that, so we are seeing an improved situation. And then as it relates to suppliers, you know, challenges and issues with suppliers is not new. We've been dealing with this, um, you know, ever since uh, the beginning of the pandemic and, and certainly with the semiconductor shortage and all the other challenges. And we just, we have a great relationship with our suppliers. We keep working, solving issues looking for efficiencies as a normal course, and we're going to continue to do that. What about on the demand side? Are, are, is, is there any shift in demand as, as we've seen economic conditions and financial conditions tighten? Well, you know, we still are in a supply constrained um, market. And, you know, from General Motors' perspective, we have a really strong pro product portfolio. We just had a major upgrade to our, our full size trucks, the Chevrolet Silverado, as well as the GMC Sierra. And so we're seeing very strong demand and very strong demand for, for trucks and full size SUVs. So that continues. It's something we're watching carefully, but right now, demand is still very strong. Speaking of demand, uh, I want to ask Stephen what you're seeing, uh, Stephen, in terms of the consumer out there and the corporate traveler. It's so critical to Hertz's bottom line. Uh, and I know that in the past you have said, look, we're seeing corporate travel increase. What's the outlook right now that you're seeing in terms of how many people are out on the road for business? Phil, the question is really timely. I mean, as you know, leisure travel has bounced back uh, almost to at or above where we were in 19. Corporate travel as of late uh, has been accelerating and improving quite noticeably. And I say that uh, particularly with reference to small and mid-sized businesses, as well as some of our corporate clients. We are now back to about 80 to 90 percent of where pre-pandemic demand was, and we continue uh, to see that grow. Now, we're mindful of all of the issues uh, that have been spoken about on the show in terms of risk of recession and the like, and so we mind ourselves in terms of all of that. But 
if I was just to look through the lens of where demand sits, demand is improving and growing in the corporate space. It's been there on the leisure side. Uh, and so near as we see, uh, you know, consumer demand and corporate demand remains quite strong and is growing. Stephen, one last question with regard to the EV deal with General Motors and EVs in general being offered by Hertz. Uh, as somebody who does a lot of travel himself, uh, I can tell you that the last thing I'm thinking about when I am heading to the airport is I got to stop and, well, with gas, I obviously have to refuel, but I'm not going to want to stop and recharge. Uh, are you concerned about the lack of public charging stations and infrastructure that it might slow down demand for EV rentals? Well, for now, we're making it quite easy for our customers. We're asking you to come back uh, with a minimum of a 10% charge. So that will relieve the near-term anxiety that people, people may feel. What you will see us announce over time, and including an announcement later this week, is we are engaging with multiple parties that are building and developing charging networks around the country, such that a Hertz customer can be indifferent as to the network they use. We will aggregate those, those uh, networks in an app, uh, we'll leave it to the customer to make a choice. They will be available all across the country. And then we'll bill the customer at that cost when they close out the rental. So we're, we're focused on it. We're engaged, uh, you know, to develop a relationship. We obviously know where cars are going. We're a big buyer and we'll be a, a big consumer of charging networks. And we're looking to make it much easier for our customers to overcome any, I think, unfounded anxiety they may have.